Hey guys, welcome in. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, we're going to do a little Sephora newness, a little Sephora haul, and try on what I can. Um, there are some things that are kind of overlapping, so I won't be able to put it all on, but I'm going to put some of it on. And I've already got my skincare on today, and this is the first thing. There's a new foundation stick. I had to try it. It's from Fenty, and it's called the Ease Drop. That was the name of their like skin tint liquid skin tint thing too. Blur and Smooth Tint Stick. It says blurs and evens complexion, light coverage, and a smooth glide stick. And I have the shade uh, four in this. So I've used this a couple times. I got this haul in on like Friday. So I've been playing a little bit. So this is what the stick looks like. And it glides on like so thin and easy. Like very little pressure. It's super light. It's probably like the most lightweight feeling, most thinned out on the skin foundation stick that I have. So I've got that on all over and then I'm just going to take this little elf brush and blend it in. I've also blended this in with a sponge. It can really go either way. Um, a brush is probably best for maintaining the most coverage out of this. I think it goes a little beyond light coverage. I think it's kind of a light medium, but you will have that kind of like glowy look on the surface of the skin, almost like it's melting down just a little bit. Feel on the skin, it doesn't feel too thick. My skin does feel a little bit dewy. Yeah, we're talking lightweight, light to medium coverage foundation stick there. Always excited to try a new foundation stick. It's funny because it's this application, but then you look at your skin and you kind of have this luminosity that makes you think you just put on a tinted moisturizer or something. But yeah, I would say light to medium coverage. Then I got two different concealers. I got um, the new one from Tower 28. What's that one called? It's called Swipe Serum Concealer. Weightless Serum Concealer has the power to visibly cover dark circles, hyperpigmentation, and redness designed for sensitive skin. It helps hydrate and smooth textured skin without silicones. Medium buildable coverage with a natural finish. So I have that and I also have the new Mario one. Um, so this one is the Surreal Skin Awakening Concealer. That's in the shade 160 and this one is in the shade 3.0 CC. And Mario says, I created this weightless concealer to lift, brighten, and perfect the complexion. Um, I think I'm gonna use this one today, purely in the experimental phases with these concealers. Mario went a different route from all the concealers that are coming out with the giant Buckfoot applicators. He went back to the classic doe foot. So we're gonna apply a couple dots here and out this way. Around the nose, I just, I'm always a little red around the nose with the nose blowing and stuff, which fortunately I feel like I'm about out of the woods with the cold. Nice click on the cap, hear that? Really clicks shut. Okay, and I'm going to spread and then I'll dab it in. The shade is so perfect. Like this is exactly what I want a concealer to do. I want it to be able to go across the skin and look brightened. I want it to patch across and just feel like, yes, life. You know what I'm saying? Just a step up from the rest of the skin. That's really the expectation I've come to have with concealers. Around the nose. Again, the goal here at this stage of the game for me is not to fully blend this in, but to move the concealer around and make it take up a little more room on the skin. So then I can come in with this brush and just dab gently. And I feel like that's my coverage maximizing technique. This looks really good on the skin. It says it has fermented marine microorganisms, and what that's gonna do is smooth skin with collagen-like stimulation and a visibly tightening effect. And it does claim to be a medium coverage concealer, okay? All the shades are crease-proof and long-wearing with a self-setting formula that locks in with a natural skin-like finish. I don't really know what the self-setting means. How long does it take to self-set? Because to me, like, I've heard people say that about this product, but how long do we hang out here and wait for for it to self-set. I don't know, it still feels fairly tacky there, but again, I have a pretty hydrating thing underneath it with that stick. Owl mug. You know I'm gonna set this. <laughs> it does look good. It really does not look uh, thick, heavy, makeup-y. Oh, there's an eyelash. Surface of the skin looks practically like there isn't makeup on it. I'm excited to try this with the Mario foundation as well. Just like I'm excited to try the Tower 28 with the Tower 28 product and kind of see how they work together. But I feel really good about this. I just don't think like, if I still feel this 
dewy on the under eye area, I'm not feeling like it's set. I'm going to take a little Laura Mercier Ultra Blur, not new in the haul, just something I've had and I love. I really, really enjoy this loose powder. Ultra Blur. It's the talc free powder that she has. I'm just going to dab over this like I do. Does the size of a product have an effect on like the way you feel about it? Even with the applicator, like this is such a little tiny back to the way things used to be doe foot applicator. And I think about Tarte Shape Tape, how it's got the big applicator. Or I think about Maybelline Lifter Gloss and how it's so substantial to hold. Does a large product leave like more of an impression on you as you're using it? And you just subconsciously think that it's better because it's bigger? thoughts. I think maybe for certain things that's true. And then for other things like a gigantic eyeshadow palette that's not practical, then we begin to resent the largeness. Okay, I've dabbed around my T-zone and my under eye with my Laura, and I can see a little excess here, so I'm going to dust that away. Now that feels set. <laughs> and it really doesn't look like, oh, so much heavier because I put powder on it. And I want a little powder elsewhere on the skin, just a light bit. I've been reaching for Laura Geller Balance and Brighten a lot to do this. I actually have a couple of new Laura Geller blushes as well. She had blush week. Um, I think it was during rush week. There were like 50% off deals all over the website. And I got a new brush and like three different blushes. One came broken. So I just like sent an email to customer service and showed a picture of that. So maybe that'll get replaced, I hope. I'm just picking up a little bit of this on my brush. I feel like I always need to say that so you know I'm not applying like a Full heavy layer of something on top. At least in the summer months, like it makes me feel so much better to have set somewhat all over. Now, I saw this new line of stuff called Mango People, and it appears all they have are a few products so far, and they're sticks. Stick makeup, okay? They look like this. Um, and the ratings were really, really good across the board. It hasn't been around that long, but they've got each got over a hundred, and the average is five stars on this stuff. So there's a bronzer stick. I got that in the shade Dune. I got the um, cream blush and lip multi stick in Cherry, and then there's a dewy glow stick, which I actually got. I could have gotten this in a lighter shade, but I got this glowy like a rose shade called Rose Dew. Mango People is a fruit powered. Ayurvedic inspired eco-conscious makeup brand. So we've got these skinny sticks that are lipstick sized and when this goes over the face there's some pull with that stick and one of my sticks the cherry one the multi stick for like lip and cheek it broke off at the base and I wasn't using this like hot off the UPS truck or anything. Like, I mean, I, everything has had a chance to just sit and be. I was noticing that sometimes, you know, th things can get shifty. When that tube does not fully hug that stick all the way up, it can shift. And we've all seen lipsticks that shift a little bit. And then you have that little mark on the side of your stick somewhere where it's moved. And I saw that with the cherry one and I fully twisted it up and I realized it had completely broken off of the base. So I'm just, that, that one's hanging on by a thread. But as you can see, I've got Dune here on and I'm gonna buff that in with my Sephora brush and it's blending beautifully. It's kind of rich and has almost a little bit of a reddish tone in it. I like it. I like the color. You know, it's got this kind of toastiness. Can you see that working in? I'm going to try to pull that up a little bit. That almost looks like a toasty blush. Like, I really like the shade. And while the cherry one is the only one that has broken so far, I just fear that it's going to happen with the others because of the small shape of the stick and I feel that pull uh, or a little bit of a drag going across the skin. Um, it, the opposite thing would be this stick, the glide. You know, this absolutely glides across the skin with hardly any pressure. You feel like you're barely holding the stick and it's just gliding on and transferring on. And these mango people sticks, they pull a little. There's a little more thickness in them. And I don't really mind it, but if you're going to give me a small lipstick size stick like that, like, has this not happened to other people? Judging by the perfect rating, I'm guessing not. And by the way, Dune, 
The shade that I just used is like the medium color in the range. There's three different shades. And I suppose some would say you don't have to drag this across the skin. Maybe you could like brush some off on your brush or, you know, find a little more gentle way to go about it. Yes, I think that's an option. But this is my cherry shade and I'll just show you. You twist it up and at the base, you know, it's fully broken. It fell on the floor. And now I've just kind of tamped it down. And by the way, Beautiful magnetic closures on these. The one that's the highlighter, I got it in Rose Dew, and it does feel more sheer and thin. Like, it's just like a glowy pink. Kind of think blush topper type vibes. But you can see where it's been used, and it's not totally broken, but it's bumped up against the side. This cherry, I feel like I can still use it if I barely twist it up at all, but I hate feeling that movement in the stick from where it's broken. Like, what do I do? I should just ask for a new one. But that's what that shade looks like. It's kind of like toasty, earthy red, like a red-brown mix, okay? So that was what's called a blush or a lip and cheek, and that's what's called the highlighter. So I think nice quality products, but just kind of leaving me concerned on the fact that those are going to be stretched across the face, moved across the skin. That is what makes a stick product easy to me, is the ability to swipe. And if they can't hold up to the swipes, I think we got some issues. So I got those three things, but I also wanna show you, I got a new Patrick Ta blush. I got the shade She's Wanted. So he came out with several new colors, and this is the deep one, guys. Yeah, deep and berry. We have the cream blush under this window. I love that there's a window there. This is my first actual singular blush duo because everything else I've tried from him is in my blush palette. But I was seeing pictures of it on all skin tones, like from light to deep. And I think he did a great job showing that this can be beautiful on any skin tone. And I believe I saw him on TikTok talking about it as well. And he talks about actually applying the powder first and then you top off with the blush. And I think it gives that that more like a uh, little bit dewy appearance to the look. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take my e.l.f. blush brush with this color. I've used this once before. Look how pretty this is. Pretty berry fall blush. Like I was so excited to get this. Oh, look at that, I love it. So this is again, just the powder really pigmented, pure color, matte, maybe with the slightest satin finish. I feel like if it was under a microscope, I'd see a little satin finish. But yeah, she's ultra pigmented. And it's looking loud right now, but you know it'll all come together by the end of the look. And then I'm gonna take like a really light brush, just any kind of stippling brush. I don't think they still make these Eco Tools 360 ones, maybe they do, but I'm gonna get just a little bit of the cream, you might be able to tell, like it just puts a little sheen on top of everything. It really follows the very same color. And this is definitely a product where you could go either or, you could be like, I feel like the cream blush today and only do that, or only the powder. It doesn't have to turn into a layering thing, but I think the cream on top just brings the whole skin to life a little more, gives it a little more sheen. Not for the faint of heart on that one, like it is gonna show a lot. You could go very subtle with it, but deep blushes have that range. And especially a deep blush and two formulas on here, I could get any number of looks with this. I could apply it just barely and it would look like kind of a soft pink. And my skin does not feel sticky at all right now. Next up, I'm gonna do my brows and then we'll return to talk about the eyes. I don't have a new eye product, but maybe we'll just fill in and chat about something. <laughs> brows are done, um, eye primer is on. I said I didn't have a new eyeshadow palette, but I do have this that came in PR. And I'm not sure if this is gonna be a Sephora or I, I'm pretty sure it's an Ulta product, this Buxom Forever Babe palette. Our brownish, our berry, and our kind of cool smoky. I've used this quad already a little bit and I actually mixed it with some of that. So maybe today I'll go for a little bit of this one. For the crease, let's see if we can make this quad work and this quad alone. I'm gonna go into this bronzy shade. I guess. It does have shimmer, but I don't want to immediately hop to dark brown. So the texture of these shadows is really nice. It reminds me so much of like Maybelline City Mini palettes, you know, like the kind of thin but pigmented smooth texture of those shimmers. And you know, the mattes are fine to work with as well. And by the way, that bronze is working just fine as a crease color. 
do you think when a palette is laid out like this? Like, do you appreciate something being fully divided into the intended quads, or do you just want everything to be all scrambled up? I don't feel like I would want every palette I own to be this way, but I don't mind if like, okay, Buxom decided to do it. Okay, I'm fine with that. I think it's sometimes nice to know what the intended direction was with a palette. So this is just the bronze shimmer so far that I've taken here. And I've taken it kind of above my crease, really fully trying to get it all blended out here. Kind of surprised at how well that worked. Like I know you can sheer out shimmer sometimes, but that went well. I'm going to take this just blending brush and make sure my edges are really clean and blended. So guys, I was thinking about what show I want to watch. Like I'm, I'm enjoying West Wing. We're going to continue watching West Wing. We've kind of gotten into some football documentaries here lately. The quarterbacks one is really good on Netflix. But I heard someone mention Felicity recently and I'm thinking back to when I was watching Dawson's Creek and someone said, after that you need to watch Felicity. And I'm kind of like wondering why. Are the two kind of similar? Should I watch Felicity? I don't know. I'm thinking about it. I've got a busy day today because Bub has things at both ends of his day in St. Louis. Like he has a morning thing in St. Louis that he has to leave early for. And then a deposition that doesn't start until like a 3.30 or something. Therefore, I will be taking the girls to school. And then when they have dance later, the plan was originally for Bub to like just come through and take Bubba and go on home with him so he doesn't have to sit there and wait the whole time. But that won't be happening, so I'm gonna have to ask for Nana's help on that. The girls do have back-to-back -back dance classes, which is really convenient, but they're a little bit longer now. And it's just not ideal, like, entertain a three-year-old right around dinner time type of mode. He's happier when he's like running around outside. But anyways, I'm gonna take this matte brown and we're gonna put some of this on the outer corner. Wait a minute! This isn't the one I said I was gonna use! I said I was... Oh my gosh! I'm sorry you guys. <laughs> so I just realized I announced I was gonna use this quad. And then I pulled it down here and I just like flipped it in my mind and I started using this one. Okay, well, we're just sticking with it then, I guess. I truly meant to use the one on the far right. Wake up, Em. They do look really similar, I will say, but I shouldn't have confused it. Jeez Louise. There's our brown coming up to kind of touch the crease a little. Standard me vibes, but this is the kind of look I like on my eyes. I like having darkness on the outside and creating lift. This is just small pointed brush with a little extra product on it. How did I do that? Like I was showing the palette like this and then I come down and I just immediately go into the other quad. Using the bronzy shade as kind of my base helped a lot because this brown is just meshing right into it. These shades are easily blendable. Um, it's just not very unique, really, all around. What I see here, I open this up and I'm like, ooh, I got a lot of that. But I do like the thoughtful separation. I'm going to take some of this shimmer right here. So this is a little more like beigey, I guess. And we're going to dab that on center of the lid and inward. Super like typical eye look that you're going to find out of a lot of different palettes. So on Saturday, the girls and I had a little like girls morning. We went to Home Goods. We just shopped around a little bit. We ended up at Burger King. We all wore our crowns. It was so much fun. I'm cool with this eye look. I'm just not like jumping up and down for it. I think you guys know where I'm at with this, okay? So I'm gonna take a little more brown. Line down here. Do a little smoky liner, why not? Moral of the story, I was able to stick with one quad. <laughs> Whether or not it was the one I meant to stick to, I was able to just stay with that one and create a full look that I'm satisfied with. We're satisfied. We're cool with that. I'm going to put on a little bit of eyeliner real quick. Uh, nothing new, but we'll just use our Sephora Little Black Dress Colorful Wink It Felt Tip Liner. It does last really well. And I'm just going for a really thin line along the lash line. I have a mascara combo that I really like. 
and I've come to a realization about the Huda. You saw this in a past Sephora haul, the Huda One Coat Wow. It did well for one coat, and then I built another coat on top of it, and I'm like, wow, this looks really good. But with wear, I could see the little spiky like, you know, the lashes developed a snorkel on the end, a little hook. They didn't just stay nice and elongated. That was after two coats. One coat doesn't seem to do that. It says one coat wow. It doesn't say try two coats. It's one coat wow. In an effort to push things, two coats is too much. But it will do well on top of a primer. This can't lay on top of itself, but it can be the blanket that goes on top of a primer. I, I have this new Too Faced primer, and I, I've used it with a few different things. I haven't been amazed, but it does work very well alongside this one. Works better alongside this than some others. Like I tried my Lancome Lash Primer. That didn't do quite so well, but these two together did pretty good. So I'm gonna show you that today. So I'm gonna first curl my lashes. This is my Shiseido Lash Curler. What, what is with me? What's with my obsession with like, okay, it said one coat. Can't we just do the one coat, appreciate that it looked good as one coat, and just leave it at that? No, it's like, how can I possibly get more on my lashes? So we take our little Too Faced primer. It's a curved brush, rubber bristles, and we're just going to get some of that on there. You can see it. I mean, it doesn't lay down as heavily as a full-on mascara would, and that's not the point. It's a primer. But anyway, I get some of that on. There we go. And then I go ahead and do the other eye as well with that. Okay, we have primed both sets of lashes. It looks like a light coat of a natural mascara. That's what the primer comes off like. But then you take your Huda, one coat wow. It's like I took the name of this mascara as a personal challenge. And the brush holds some product. So I think that's what helps it coat up. But it looks even bigger and badder and better when she goes over this primer. One coat was good, but one coat on top of primer, and it doesn't do the funky ends thing. It doesn't do snorkels. Thick, dark, long, how to make it do the most. Look at this thickness building up. See, this is nice. It's practically giving like a false lash vibe. And I rarely say that about a mascara. Even the kitten's coming in like, what's going on in here? This one's got a little something going on at the end, a little clump. Okay, I like it like that. A little Cali Ray come hell or high water on the lower lashes as usual. Somebody tagged me on Instagram saying they just got the mini of this which is a sensible thing to do because, you know, you really don't use it up as fast if you're only using it for lower lashes. I got a little dot of it under the eye, doggone it. Anyways, I'm proud of the mascara pairing. I think it looks good. It looks really thick. I'm into it. Now I have a few different lip things, just a few here. So I was influenced by Alabama Rush Talk on TikTok and Kylan, who looks like an absolute Barbie doll princess, and she does a lip combo involving Dior products, and it caused me to get the Dior Lip Glow that goes pinky on your lips. Um, I actually have the matte version of this that I got quite a while back, and I didn't love it, and it kind of like just turned me off from it. This is much more pleasant to put on, and then on top of that, she used uses the lip glow oil, which I've heard tons of people rave about this stuff. She uses the cherry shade in that, but I was looking at it and I thought, hmm, I'm kind of more intrigued by this shade called Mahogany. I had to look at the box to know. Um, but these feel so luxurious. Like this little cap thing going on, I might just be stuck on these. Those are incredibly cute. Okay, so I'm going to first just show you this on its own, this lip glow oil. Everybody's always talking about one of these and comparing it to other things. And I kind of wanted to see also, is it a lot like the hard candy ones that I have? And I feel like the texture is super similar. I like this little rounded buck foot here. Okay, so that's mahogany. It smells good. I can't quite put my finger on it. Is it just a kind of a sweet, but a little bit of a rich smell? Is it developing some kind of color there? Is it tinting my lips whatsoever? Maybe just slightly? 
think I like it. Like I said, she was using one of these on top of this, so maybe we'll recreate that look in a second. But I also have a lip product from Merit here. Somebody told me I really needed to investigate the Merit lipstick and see if I could find like a formula dupe or whatever. And I will say, this packaging feels luxe. This packaging feels cheap. Like what they did with their bronzer sticks, it feels light and where's the weight? Well, they put the weight into their lipsticks and I like that packaging. I like how it pulls out from the tinted tube and I got the shade called Tiger here in their signature lip. And I have a scratch on my back that is just urgent. So first we're gonna take off that lip oil. Dang, I wiped it off and my lips feel absolutely supple. I'm gonna show you Tiger here. So this is what the lipstick looks like. It has some shine. Tiger is a very like pumpkin spice type of color to me. By the description, I thought it was gonna have more red in it, but to me it seems kind of like just this toasty, pumpkin-y vibe. Look at it in a swatch, like you don't see a lot of red, kind of bronzy pumpkin. The stick seems to hang together well. It's not like bouncing toward the side of my tube, which is good, and I like the way it looks in that. Like, I really enjoy that. Pretty. Lux. That's where Merit put their money, <laughs> It's into the lipstick. So that feels good, feels comfortable, I really do like the color, it's kind of unique for me, so I'm into that. I'm glad I tried it and I'll be thinking about what out there is similar to that kind of formula. It makes me think a little bit when Revlon Super Lustrous came out with a sheer formula of their lipsticks, but I'm not so sure they're making those anymore. Anyway, got this Dior Lip Glow. This is the Color Reviver Balm Dior Attic Lip Glow in pink. So this is the one Kylan used. And I loved her pink lip that she was putting together, and it just looks so fancy. And so you put this on, and you do see kind of a color developing thing happen. And it feels smooth, feels luxurious. There's a thickness to that balm that I really like. And so she uses that. I think she might throw in a lip liner as well, like a Charlotte Tilbury. We got Pillow Talk up in here. We actually do. Maybe I'll define a little bit with that. Why not? Can you see how that's like deepening a little, the pink? It's pretty. Like, I really like that. I'm not really messing with the color much. I don't want to. I want you to see that. Pinky developing thing happening. And then she would go on top with this, but in the cherry color. But I had to go do my own thing and get mahogany. Nice and shiny. Ooh, that's a juicy lip. Why do I feel so luxurious just for that packaging? I was influenced. The lip is so pretty. It's like every day, but special. I like it. I'm gonna take a little bit of Kosas Cloud Set. This was not in the haul. This is the shade Airy. And kind of hit on top of this area. Um, what are my favorite things in this haul? I feel like the concealers I got are still under investigation. <laughs> I really like the feel of this um, foundation stick. I love a foundation stick, and this was just had such a nice ease of application. I really enjoy that. I, I like putting it on, okay? I like putting it on. I like this a lot, the Patrick Ta stuff. Um, the Mango People, these sticks, Honestly, this packaging is a little bit of a letdown for me. I wish it was thicker and chunkier or they came up with um, a stick that really hugged and held that cream. What am I talking about? Like, see what these from Hard Candy, this kind of packaging where the tube does not allow for any wiggle room for that stick of product. That's what the mango people need if they're going to continue putting out a stick that's skinny and lipstick sized, but with the intention of it being like swiped around on the face, it needs more stability in there, don't you think? These and probably these are like my favorite things. <laughs> Your lip products, they are pure luxury. I feel like the most special thing is this because I like the color that it kind of morphs into on my lips, but this mahogany sure is fun too. I just don't think this offers a lot of color and I think you could easily sub in like one of these from Hard Candy and kind of have that same feel. And these are super cute too. But anyway, thank you Kylan for the inspo. And yeah, that's my haul. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you had fun. I had a great time and I will see you again very soon. I love you. Bye.